Dylan's chilling somewhere else and I'm taking over. We're about to get into the perplexing puzzle of light's duality. In a nutshell, the double slit experiment implies that our view of light as particles or waves depends on our perspective. This wild notion shakes up our typical beliefs about the world and the universe. Investigating these possibilities can reveal some crazy insights. The von Neumann-Wigner interpretation of quantum mechanics posits that consciousness, specifically the act of observation by a conscious observer, is responsible for the collapse of the wave function, which is a key feature of quantum theory. This interpretation, which was first proposed in the 1960s by the mathematician John von Neumann and the physicist Eugene Wigner, suggests that the act of observation by a conscious mind plays a fundamental role in determining the outcome of a quantum event. This interpretation has been the subject of much debate and discussion within the scientific community, but remains an intriguing and thought-provoking idea in the realm of quantum theory. While pondering this conundrum, let's consider a possible issue with this argument. The problem arises when an instrument, rather than a conscious observer, triggers the behavior of particles in the double slit experiment. This could call into question the argument that our perceptions influence the outcome. Some philosophers and scientists continue to debate this, and the question remains, does the presence of an observer or their consciousness play a role in determining the outcome of a quantum system? Or is the act of measurement itself the trigger for the collapse of the wave function and thus the ultimate determinant of the outcome? These are the questions that continue to intrigue and mystify physicists, philosophers, and armchair quantum enthusiasts alike. One possible solution to this argument is to view the instruments not as mere tools, but rather as an integral part of the scientific process. By embracing the interconnectedness between the observer and the instrument, one can argue that the data generated is not solely a product of the instrument, but rather a result of the combined efforts of both the instrument and the observer. In this sense, the instruments can be seen as an extension of the human mind, rather than a separate entity. Wigner's interpretation asserts that even when instruments are used, it's the conscious observer behind the instrument that truly affects the outcome of a quantum system. Essentially, perception, whether it's human or artificial, plays a key role in quantum mechanics. By becoming an active agent in the process of observation, consciousness or perception becomes a fundamental player in the quantum realm. This idea has far-reaching implications, raising questions about the relationship between the observer and the observed, and the role of consciousness in shaping reality. It's important to note that Wigner's interpretation is grounded in scientific evidence and rational thought. Unlike some pseudo-scientific ideas that try to make quantum mechanics into something mystical or magical, while it's a controversial idea in the scientific community, it's far from being the type of fantastical, unfounded claims that you'd encounter at a wellness fair. It's rooted in serious scientific inquiry and empirical evidence. Indirect realism is a philosophical theory that suggests that we don't perceive the world directly, but rather through our mental representations of it. It fits nicely with Wigner's interpretation because it suggests that our perception of a quantum system is always mediated by our mental representations rather than a direct encounter with reality. Indirect realism fits well with the idea that the act of observation itself can affect the system being observed. It implies that our mental processes are playing a role in shaping the outcome of a quantum experiment. Think of reality as a video game and our minds as the rendering engine. Just like a game only renders the part of the world the player is currently looking at, our minds can only process a small portion of reality at any given time. So even though there's a whole game world out there, our perception is limited to the scene in front of us. Pretty rad analogy, right? From an evolutionary perspective, it makes sense that our brains would be wired to conserve energy by only processing what we need to at any given moment. Instead of trying to perceive the entire universe at once, which would require an absurd amount of energy, our brains are selective in what they process. This allows us to focus on what's important and ignore the background noise, saving precious energy in the process. It's kind of like how a smartphone only keeps the apps you're currently using running and shuts down the ones you're not using to conserve battery life. Same principle. Yep, the theory suggests that reality as we experience it is all in our brains. The universe itself remains unchanged. The objective reality is this vast complex system, 
but our perception of it is like a personal movie projection. It's our minds taking all this information from the universe and creating a simplified version of it tailored to our needs and abilities. Think of it like a translator that takes a complex language and converts it into something simpler and more accessible. The original language stays the same, but the translation allows us to understand it better. That's kind of what our minds are doing with reality. Wigner's interpretation is just one of many ways of looking at the quantum world. Another widely accepted interpretation is the Copenhagen interpretation, which says that the quantum system's wave function is in a state of superposition, meaning it has the potential to be in multiple states at once until it is measured, at which point the wave function collapses into a single definite state. This interpretation has been widely accepted since the 1920s and has helped explain a lot of the strange phenomena observed in the quantum realm. Of course, there are other interpretations too, but these two are the big ones. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Space Ponder. We've taken a deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of quantum mechanics and explored some mind-bending interpretations. Stay tuned for future episodes where we'll ponder even more cosmic conundrums. Peace out, fellow space ponderers.